Uh, good morning and thank you for being here for the Hedge Investment Credit Fund monthly update for the month of September. September was a very difficult month for us, probably the worst uh, we had since the inception of the fund in 2012, so uh, more than 10 years ago. Um, the loss was around 4%, predominantly due to the macro positioning and specifically the long duration uh, positioning that we have established in the fund progressively since the end of August. Um, we like that position because we think we uh, at a point in terms of the speed and size of the movement in interest rate where I think we will see both the probability of a financial accident increasingly significantly. And on the other side, we do expect the lag effect of monetary policy impact on the economy to be quite brutal and very negative, especially for Europe. The position of the fund, which we've been keeping since uh, the end of September pretty much around the same levels is effectively long duration, especially in Europe um, on the long end, and then a position in bearish on the equity. Obviously that position hasn't worked, hasn't worked in September, and it hasn't been working until now, but the uh, rationale behind is exactly this, that the, we see probability of financial accidents going up, and at the same time, the chance of a, a significant economic slowdown, especially in Europe, to be very, very uh, material at this point. Um, away from that, we had uh, um, a few other you know, idiosyncratic movements, uh, especially in Argentina and Ukraine, where we lost another 1%. And overall, our um, uh, positive gains on the hedges have been uh, kind of immaterial to this overall picture. Um, in terms of special situation, we remain invested in that telecom sector, which we quite like in terms of its structural attractiveness and ability to refinance. Uh, the main position are DISH, which obviously has done quite a lot of progress in terms of the uh, risking uh, their balance sheet and being ready for possibly a refinancing. And on the other side, Telecom Italia, where there is a continuous ongoing negotiation between KKR uh, as a buyer and the government behind them. Uh, and on the other side, Vivendi as a minority investor with a sizable blocking minority in terms of voting power. Um, we still expect the deal to progress. We think Vivendi eventually is between two worst case scenarios. Uh, one is um, a fight with the government where they lose, and the other one is a fight with the government where they win, and they ended up and they end up having a very dilutive capital increase being uh, pushed upon them by all the other shareholders and possibly the regulators. So we think Vivendi eventually will negotiate with the government uh, and there is plenty of uh, degrees of freedom at the contractual level in terms of the price for the rental of the fixed network, the price uh, for the debt and the kind of debt they're gonna transfer and the amount of employees. So overall, we think it's, it's gonna go ahead. Uh, positioning, as I said, macro remain very bearish on asset classes, especially equity and credit. We reduce pretty much any exposure we had in credit right now. Um, and then we think there has to be a movement between uh, uh, credit fixed income in general, actually fixed income uh, as in government bonds, uh, into the um, into the high quality uh, AAA trading at 30 to 50 cents of the dollar, which is where the long end is, while the equity is very overvalued. Even just a single digit, double digit, um, uh, single digit, sorry, a one or two percent movement from uh, reallocation from equity to fixed income would have a disproportionate impact on, on the pricing and it would be very positive for our performance. Thank you.